the webinar for resource management. So we're going to be diving into the platform, having a look at different resources, um, and yeah, seeing how you can use it better within the platform. Uh, Lauren joins me today. She's also one of the other CSMs. So we're two of the CSM team here at Access Planet, uh, and we'll be helping with the presentation today. So yeah, we'll dive straight in um, with the presentation. So yeah. Good morning, everyone. So resources is a really wide topic, but today we're going to specifically focus on these objectives. So the first one is understanding what resources are and how they can be used within the platform. Then we're going to look at understanding how Access Planet can integrate with Microsoft Exchange and the benefits this can bring. And finally, understand trainer access and what this means for your trainers. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to pop them in at the end of the chat. Uh, sorry, pop them in the chat and we will answer them towards the end. So resources. These are items that training providers have access to for assigning to courses. The most popular resources are venues, trainers, equipment, and catering. This can be as specific as 20 pens and 20 pieces of paper, or as generic as three first full, uh, full first aid kits. It's what works best for you and your company. The platform allows customization to add in your own resources that aren't standard. In terms of venues, there are two types of venue, internal and external. Internal venues are owned by your provider, for example, any training rooms that you have on site. And external venues are ones that training providers need to book with a third party. So for example, a local swimming pool or perhaps a meeting room that's in someone else's building. Venues can be added onto course dates and then used within the workflows. In terms of trainers, there are two types of trainer, internal and external. Internal trainers are ones that work solely for your organization. And external trainers are those that need to be booked to teach your specific course. Both types of trainers can have access to exchange integration. However, more common is that only the internal trainers use this. Both internal and external trainers can access the platform with the My Teaching access. So perfect. Before we jump into the exchange integration, to um, have a look in the platform, show you how to set up the uh, different resources. Um, so we'll jump right in. So we're now into one of our test platforms. So this should look very similar to most of yours. And then on the left hand side, you've got the resources tab here. So you should all have access to this. Um, and this will be where you manage your resources from. So you can uh, click manage. And this is where you go to see your list of current resources set up in the platform, as well as set up any new ones. So here you can see the labels that we've given to it. So these are people that may be a trainer um, or this here is a venue. Um, so that's the name that we've given to it and then the type. So here you can see all the different types that they've got, any costs associated to it. Um, and then as, as usual with the data grid, you can follow this to show the sort of information you want to see. So if you didn't want to see the cost or the cost type, you can remove those just by selecting the, the different columns that you can see here in the top right. So we'll just get rid of cost type because I'm not really too bothered about seeing that. So you just click the minus, minus button and then you'll click apply. And then that will just show an update in the data grid. So um, to add a new resource, you literally click the resource tab in the top left. And here, this is for any type of resource you're wanting to create. So you pick the account. So if you're a multi-training provider, you'd select the account from the list here that you want the um, resource to be associated with. And then in the label, this is where you type in the label of the title, the name of the resource. So here we'll set Lauren up as a trainer. From the type then list, you've then got all of your options. So as I mentioned, trainer and venue are the standard options within the platform. You can then add in your own ones, such as invigilator, mobile classroom, or certificates. Um, they're all customizable per platform. So we'll set Lauren up as one of our in-house trainers and the cost. So if you want to set up how much it costs for Lauren to be a trainer, um, you can set that up here. Because she's an in-house trainer, there's no cost associated to that. But if they're an external trainer, you could pop it per session or per hour. So uh, Lauren could be £50 per hour to teach whatever courses that she's teaching. 
There's only one alarm, so we'll just keep that as one. And then you can set colours too. So this is when you're using the calendar for scheduling. Just makes it look a bit nicer. Um, we'd also recommend using like a nice pastel colour. Makes it a bit easier to, uh, to view. It's not as harsh. You can um, pop a URL in that links to Lauren as a trainer um, and then pick the time zone that she's in. And then enabled or um, we want Lauren to be enabled. But if someone leaves your company, for example, you can come in and untick this box. And this will mean then that you can't select them to be on a course. The one thing with a trainer is that it needs to be mapped to a user. So if they're an internal uh, trainer or an in-house trainer, then they should already be within the platform. So you can just search in here and we'll pick Lauren from the list. And then this will map this trainer resource to Lauren's uh, main account within the platform. And this is where the My Teaching Access comes in. If they're an external trainer, um, then it would ask to set up an account at the same time. So when you're setting up the resource for an external trainer, it will then make that account for, uh, for a trainer if they're not already in the platform. And then you can pop in a description for what Lauren is. So if she, if you want to give more of a description, um, people use this more for like venues, capacity, how many people it can hold, that sort of thing. Um, you pop that in that box there. And then specifically for trainers, you get this option at the bottom called My Teaching. So if you want your trainers to access the platform, you can click the My Teaching Access box, which will then give you these extra options. So we'll dive into this a bit later on, but this is where you would give these uh, My Teaching Access options to your trainers. And this only appears for a trainer. So that would be then how we set up Lauren uh, as a trainer. You literally click save and then that is Lauren set up. The process is exactly the same for a venue. Um, obviously for the type, you would then just click venue instead, in-house or external. Um, and everything's pretty much the same, except you won't have the information here about trainer. Um, a venue doesn't need to be mapped to anything or a user in particular. Then on the left-hand side, you'll get all these options and you've saved so you can see any availabilities. So pop in on availabilities when Lauren wouldn't be available. So if I know she's going on annual leave next week, we can pop that in. So then when we go to do any scheduling, it will show Lauren is unavailable. Um, you can also see a calendar for any events that she will be going on. Um, and then courses, any courses that Lauren, if you click this, this will then give a list of any courses that Lauren's been then assigned to teach. You can also add notes against Lauren, add any files against her. So if you need um, your trainers to have certain qualifications to be able to teach, you can keep a copy of those uh, on the platform too. So you know that they're always up to date. The exchange integration, again, which we'll go in a bit later, is uh, this option here as well. will only come up for your trainers on the left-hand side. Um, if uh, For venues, this, work, this option won't appear. Um, so that's how you set up the two trainers. While we're here, we're just going to show in the calendar view. So the calendar view of resources is um, where you can kind of see all, you can manage your resources, basically. So from this view, you can uh, click at the top, the resources that you want to view. So you can click just trainers as a whole. So you can see your internal and external trainers. You can select trainers individually and see their calendar, um, or you can select venues individually as well. And then it will show on this grid here. So if I just wanted to see anything that um, I am assigned to as a trainer, so I can click here and then see anything that I'm scheduled for today, click week or month view. This is where obviously is more you assign trainers to, you can see all, it all populating here. Um, it is a good way to be able to drag and drop as well. So move things around for different trainers when you're assigning and giving those, um, giving those um, courses to different trainers and different venues. Uh, we focus a lot on trainers because um, that's kind of one of the most common ones. The same principles apply for uh, venues or any other equipment that you add into um, into the platform. So that's kind of a whistle stop tour of how to add uh, add them in. It's quite easy. Um, we'll send out some resources for you as well at the end um, with our help guide of how to add it, where you can follow the step by step guide is a really good way if you're not sure on how to add them into the platform. So we're going to jump back in now um, and look and talk about the exchange integration. Apologies, bear with me. Perfect. So exchange integration uh, is something that we offer within the platform. So this um, is an additional module within the Access Planet. So it's not considered core. And there is an additional charge, which your CSM can help with the cost for. Uh, so if you're interested, contact them directly. Um, but looking more at what the exchange integration can do, um, it allows a one or a two-way sync between your Access Planet calendar and a trainer calendar. So this is where we say mainly internal trainers use it is because um, external trainers you may only use for one or two courses, whereas your internal trainers in theory are going to be doing the majority of their work for you. Um, so you can choose to have your Access Planet calendar events for trainers sync directly to their calendar. 
or you can choose to have anything in their calendar from the exchange integrated and pulled into their Access Planet calendar. So, for example, when we were talking about annual leave before, if Lauren's off next week and she puts it in her exchange calendar with the sync turned on two way, those events will pull into Access Planet as an unavailability. So when you're doing your scheduling, you'll see, OK, Lauren's off and then you'll leave that week. It won't let you schedule and it will let you know there's a clash. So that's the benefit of being able to use the exchange integration is that for your scheduling, it's a lot easier for private appointments. So, for example, if Lauren's got a private doctor's appointment that she's put into her calendar, that will also pull through into Access Planet for your scheduling, but it will still pull through as private. So none of that privacy issue pulls through. You won't see what Lauren's doing. It will just show as a private appointment. Um, so, yeah, any events in there, uh, as I mentioned before, anything in their exchange calendar can be pulled into exchange. And then any courses that you assign to a trainer in Access Planet will then push through to their calendar. Um, some people that don't give their trainers access to Access Planet and the platform use this really well because it means that their trainers just know where they are um, and they can see Sunday night before the Monday where they're going, what course they're training without having to get access or speak to your admins. Um, yes, yeah, so it, this just makes it easier to avoid any clashes within the platform. As we mentioned before, if they've got a private event, uh, or something already booked in or the training somewhere else that day for like your external trainers, it'll mean that you can see that availability and there's no clashes. Um, that's all set up in the platform too. So um, as I mentioned, it's an extra extra cost module. We can help you with that cost if you are interested. Um, it's nice and easy to set up and it can be set up. Um, so Exchange is set up as a platform-wide um, integration and then you can set it per trainer when you want what you want to integrate so if you want one way for some or two way for others you can set it per trainer um, and if you're interested in that we can help you get that set up the next thing we wanted to talk about today was the trainer access function so this is where we're giving trainers direct access into the platform so um, it works again for internal and external trainers um, and permission is set per trainer not per role so if you trust some trainers a bit more than others, you may want to give them more roles and more uh, permissions within the platform. So it can be very customizable and it doesn't have to be a one size fits all type thing either. So it gives trainers their own view of the courses they're teaching. So if they if you give them access, they can go into Access Planet um, within their My Teaching Access. They can see the courses that they're teaching that, uh, that they're assigned to. They can have a look at the course. So the delegates that are on there. And also gives them the option if you allow them to update the status of the course. So, as I said, if you trust your trainers and you want them to complete the course and complete the delegate status on those, they can do that within the platform too to try and take away a bit of that uh, work from your admins. So, we'll jump quickly into the platform now and just show you what that looks like for um, a trainer. So back into the platform, um, if you log, so I'm uh, an admin in this. So if you were just a trainer, you wouldn't see all these options here. You would just see this one option at the bottom left for my teaching. So you click this and then this drops down and gives you courses, confirmations and calendar. So start with courses. Um, and this is kind of pretty obvious what this will do. This basically shows you any course that you're assigned to as a trainer. So it will show you the, the name of the course, start and end date, any venue that's associated. The status of the course, if it's available, cancelled, fully booked as this status is, any spaces left, and then the trainer name, which would be me. Again, they can change what they see um, in this um, on this data grid in the top right. They can add more, um, take away some columns. Um, but what they can see is less than an admin view, so they won't necessarily see all the detail that admin would do. They can then right click on the event, and then this is the limited data that they can see. So as I mentioned before, they can see the delegates on the course. So they can see the list of everyone that's due to attend this course, um, what account they're associated to, all that sort of information. And they can see that these people are all booked on. They can also see the files associated to the course. So anything, um, any files, any registers, that sort of thing, that will all be in here. Any notes that you've put on um, associated to the course, anything you want your trainer to know, they can also add notes. So if they want to add any observations throughout the course, anything about a delegate, they can add those notes in here. And then surveys too. So any survey responses that have come back, they can see those in here. But again, as I mentioned, this is set per trainer. So if you don't want your trainers to see survey responses or have access to notes, you don't have to give that to them. One nice thing about um, the courses data grid is that you can uh, use this option here at the end of the course for your trainers. So edit course and delegate status. If we click into that at the end of the course, when the course is completed, they can then change the status to completed. So they've completed that course. That training has been done. 
They also, well, that's that will update the core status. Um, you can also let them update the, the delegate status. So instead of having to go through, this course has 20 delegates on. Instead of having to change individually each delegate status, if they click this button here, then this will apply the same core status to all of your delegates. So if I know that everyone except for Amy attended, I can set it to everyone and then just change Amy's status to no attend, for example. We can then press save and close, and then that'll update the core status and it will update all those delegate statuses too. So you can see here the core status changes to complete and it will update all those delegates to complete it as well, or the no attend for Amy in this situation. Uh, they can also generate, generate registers and sign-in sheets to use those. Uh, if you want them to use those, they can just click on those buttons and it will generate them and then signatures. So if you ask uh, or require your delegates to sign in, they can have like a tablet, log into the Access Planning platform and click the signatures option. Um, it doesn't look too great in a laptop browser, but um, on an iPad, this is ideal. You can click, um, have this ready to sign in. Alfonso comes up, click signature, and then he can just sign in this box to say that Alfonso has attended. Um, so it's like a kind of like a, another register as well if the, if you, if uh, you use that option. It's really good. On a, it looks really good on the tablet. Just to show you how to set that up for a trainer, um, you go back into resources and manage, and then we'll look at Alice as a trainer. So we'll click edit. And then um, on her profile here, if you scroll to the very bottom as we did before, you've got this option here for my teaching access. So Alice has access. So we've ticked this box, which then gives us all these different options. And here, this is where you can kind of give as much or as little as you want to your trainers. So for Alice, um, I want her to be able to set her own availability and tell me what she can work. And I want to see the file store and the course notes, but I don't want to see the, the survey submissions. So for Alice, we can untick that and she won't see any survey results um, that relate to her. Um, we also don't want her to be able to delete notes or edit any notes. We want her to create her own and view notes, but we don't want her to edit, edit anything that's already in there or edit anything afterwards. You can then click save in the top right, and that will give the permission just to Alice, but it won't affect me, for example, in the platform. Um, so that's really good to be able to just pick and choose what you give to certain people. You can have it literally where people can just view their courses if that's what you want and make no changes. Um, it just depends on what level of access you want to give to your different um, your different trainers. So that is um, resources, a, a nice quick whistle stop tour of resources. As Lauren mentioned, um, it's a really broad topic and there's lots more to look into. Uh, there's lots more look of customization if you want to add your own resources in there um, and looking at getting it set up. Um, any questions that you've got? Let me see if we've got any questions. We've got one from Claire and she's asked, is it possible to have a single trainer or venue linked to multiple pr training providers? Uh, yes, I believe you can have a, for a trainer, you'd have to have it set up across each platform. So you wouldn't be, um, you need to set it up per training provider, um, but it can link to the one user account. So you'd have to set the, pro the trainer up in each provider, but it could then just link to the one um, one user in the account. So Lauren would need to be set up as a trainer in training um, provider A, B, and C, but she'd only need to have one account in the platform. Same for venues, um, it needs to be set up per training provider. Thanks, Jack. Are there any other questions? We've got our email address on that screen too. Um, this is um, our email address for just the CSMs in general. So um, anything like from today, if you've got any other questions, just pop an email there. Um, and all of us will have access to that to be able to pick them up. Um, we'll stay on just for a few more minutes if anyone's got any other questions. But other than that, thank you very much for joining today. Um, if you've got any other questions or you're interested in the exchange integration, um, pop us an email on the CSM inbox or contact your CSM directly and we'll be able to, to help you out. Thanks again, everyone, for attending. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.